Hello, friends of the sun, and welcome to today's reading group. Which happens every Monday. You can join yourself on Zoom. All the information is down in the description. And today we're discussing multi diffusion, which I think has many interesting applications. Maybe you can come up with some new ones yourself. And let's go with Omer. Um, uh, multi diffusion was a, a project. Uh, I was a student of uh, Tali Decker at the Weizmann Institute. And in this paper, we collaborated with uh, Iron Lippen Lab, and I worked with uh, Leo Yariv uh, on this project. Um, and in general, my research has been uh, focused uh, also in our video generation. Uh, and, uh, and recently, I, I joined uh, Pika and working there also on video generation. So, and actually, I'll have, uh, uh, we'll see maybe a few slides about how we actually used uh, some of the ideas from mass diffusion, even uh, in, a, in a video generation project. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll go ahead and uh, start. Uh, so this project was uh, presented uh, in our uh, last ICML. And just to give some uh, background and some motivation, then what we wanted to do in multi-diffusion is uh, to expand the capabilities of text-to-image generation. So for example, uh, we know that we can generate very nice images with very uh, with various text prompts, for example, uh, falling stars in space. So we can generate with a stable diffusion uh, this kind of images. But what if you want to expand it and generate in different aspect ratio, for example, like very uh, uh, wide panoramas? So this is another thing that we would like to support. Or uh, we might want to, to have a, a finer uh, level of uh, control and have different text prompt for different regions in the image as sometimes if we just uh, describe the image with a single text prompt, it's very difficult to really control the spatial location of each component. And more importantly, um, we, wa we wanted to achieve these goals without training. So the motivation is that uh, we, uh, the, uh, curating given data sets for these tasks uh, can be pretty challenging. And in general, uh, as these models uh, keep improving in the, every time different architectures and different uh, uh, domains even, having a unified approach that is general and doesn't assume too much about the architecture uh, has uh, um, various benefits. Okay, so just to give uh, the general uh, setting uh, to this work. So um, the, the, we, we work uh, uh, with a pre-trained uh, diffusion model, uh, specifically text to image diffusion model in this work. And just to give some notations, so we start with a uh, uh, sampling uh, pure noise, Gaussian noise, uh, denoted uh, typically by X capital T. And then apply a sequence of uh, denoising steps until we reach the clean image. And just in terms of notation, here we treat the diffusion model more as kind of uh, the flow that it induced. So we um, denote it by a uh, phi and and the denoising steps looks like xt minus one equals phi the uh, prediction of the diffusion model given xt and t. And a bit more specifically uh, here, uh, since we work with text to image models, there is another conditioning signal uh, which will denote by y and this will be a text prompt, for example. Okay, so now back to our goals. Um, so, we will first start with the uh, first application, which is generating images at different aspect ratio, for example, uh, generating panoramic images. So this will be um, um, a way to introduce uh, the key methodological ideas, and then we'll see how they translate uh, to different applications as well. So ideally, what we would like to do is to define some generation process. This generation process is not necessarily even a diffusion process, but it's some generation process that start with uh, some uh, pure noise uh, at the target resolution. And given some text prompt, we want to apply a sequence of denoising steps until reaching a clean image uh, in a similar manner to a diffusion process uh, uh, it, can, it, it looks like. Now, the the technical problem is that the model can only work on square images, right? So, um, of course, a very naive uh, approach would be to simply divide uh, the input grid into non-overlapping uh, regions, non-overlapping crops. But obviously, if we would just apply the diffusion model in each of them, then 
we'll get totally unrelated predictions. And this is eventually uh, equivalent to just generating different samples with the model. So clearly there is no relation between them. So ideally what we would like to do um, is to also consider overlaps. In the ideal uh, setting, we would like that if we look at different overlaps, uh, overlapping crops from this uh, grid, each of them will look like a valid sample from the model. If we will achieve this, it means that there are no seams, that there are no uh, different cuts, and overall that the, the image, the resulting image, will look like, uh, like a nice looking panorama. Now, the issue is that even if we start with overlapping crops and apply a diffusion model, then although there was some overlap at the beginning, there is no reason that the generation process with respect to the overlap, and eventually overlapping pixels have different content. Okay, so um, still uh, these processes uh, are just two generations and they might have uh, uh, started from a more similar point, but they will just diverge to different generations. Okay, and by the way, uh, feel free to ask uh, questions at any point. Okay, now the high level idea in multi diffusion is uh, to fuse the independent generation process into one unified global denoising step. Now let's look at it schematically. So we divide the panorama, the input uh, noise, into various uh, overlapping regions. Then we apply at each denoising step the diffusion model independently. And then we want to consolidate all these inconsistent predictions using the diffusion model, which will define a uh, denote as psi, in order to define one global denoising step for the entire panorama. So this way, uh, intuitively, uh, we uh, will take into consideration all the overlaps. And this way, we, uh, we won't have seams and the generation, uh, we, we will bind the independent processes for the different regions into one denoising step. And once we'll have this function, uh, Psi, then we will just keep uh, applying it iteratively until we uh, reach the final clean uh, panoramic image. So now the question is how to define this multi-diffusion function, of course. And just uh, again, so um, uh, even when we generate uh, images of different aspect ratios, then it can be uh, both vertical or landscape. It doesn't have any uh, specific uh, requirement. Um, so again, uh, the, this function uh, Psi takes in uh, JT, and JT is going to be a panoramic uh, or some uh, image uh, at time step T. And the output of this function needs to be a less noisy version of this panorama, jt minus one. So let's think about what intuitively we would like to um, uh, achieve, and then we'll see like how we actually uh, achieve this. So again, um, the input to this uh, at each time step is jt, the output supposed to be jt minus one, and this psi needs to perform the global denoising step. So if let's consider um, some uh, crop from JT, okay, JT uh, superscript i. Then if we denoise it, and then we can take a different crop and also denoise that, that crop, then as I mentioned earlier, even though they are taking from uh, overlapping uh, regions, the denoising prediction, when we apply the pre-trained diffusion model, is not is no longer going to respect the overlap, and overlapping regions will have different solutions because the diffusion model uh, is being applied independently on each and every one of them. So since we only have access to the pre-trained model psi, then uh, RFE, then our idea is to define the multi diffusion to be as close as possible to the pre-trained model because that's the only prior that we have. Um, however, we also want it to satisfy our set of constraints. In this case, the set of constraints is that overlapping regions should have the same content. And afterwards, we'll see different kinds of constraints. So if we take, uh, let's say that we already have a uh, denoising result, JT minus one. So what we want from uh, this to uh, satisfy, 
that if we would take uh, the corresponding crops uh, corresponding to JT and just uh, uh, observe them, then they will be uh, close to the original predictions of the model. So this is how we define the closest uh, possible or consistent as possible with the model in a least square sense. Okay, so we want that each region will be uh, similar, but again, since uh, we have a uh, constraint that overlapping regions are going to have the same content, then clearly uh, uh, we won't be able to simply uh, take the original predictions as they are inconsistent. And as you can see here, uh, ideally we would like the content to change it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, feel free to finish your sentence next time. Uh, so the thing that we're satisfying um, precisely, so where we do not have wiggle room, is that the overlapping regions are the same. And where we do have wiggle room is how we, um, how closely our generated image matches the, or how closely our two generated regions match the two uh, priors from our single diffusion model. Right, yeah. And actually, the um, the way we formulate it is uh, with this uh, optimization problem. So uh, um, we want to find uh, J. J is the, the variable for optimization. Uh, we want to find a panorama as the dimension of the panorama, such that when we take different crops from this, from Ji, and we compare them to the original prediction of the model for this corresponding crop, then they will be as close as possible in the least square sense. Okay. Um, now so we have this set of constraints, and they will not be satisfied at every denoising step because the original diffusion model is inconsistent in different regions. But since we um, um, define this problem as taking uh, crops from J, then by design uh, we have this hard constraint that the like overlapping regions have the same content because they are taking from the same grid. Um, and the motivation is that we want to find a solution, um, a, a denoising solution that will steer the generation eventually into a consistent result. So at the very uh, beginning, the result is not going to be consistent um, because uh, the model is uh, has different predictions for different uh, uh, overlapping uh, pixels. But eventually, we just want to find to converge to a different diffusion pa a path with respect, uh, uh, which respects uh, uh, to a higher and higher degree our constraints, and eventually converge to a, a valid solution. And we'll see uh, it more uh, in a few slides. Um, now, just something very important to note: so this, uh, uh, the way we define the de the denoising result as a solution to this problem. Uh, in practice, uh, it's very uh, easy to solve it, and there is no uh, uh, just closed form uh, taking a weighted average over overlapping regions. Okay, so this is just a linear uh, uh, problem. Okay, so uh, effectively, it's uh, very easy uh, to, uh, to implement. Uh, many questions about uh, this? Yeah. Tom? Hello. Um, I have a question. Like, uh, why try to constrain that those regions be the same instead of just like uh, when you do the diffusion process, um, right? You denoise one step at a time. So why not at every step re-update them to be the same? Like in sense that the overlapping region would just be the average of the step. Uh, of model uh, I and the step of model K. Um, and at every step, you just like, uh, yeah, like, so so they're, they're kind of linked together. They're never like treated separately. Yeah, so I think that's essentially what we're uh, doing something very similar. So uh, we define, uh, here we want to define it in a, in a more uh, like, to understand what is the objective that we would like to minimize, and uh, in in practice, uh, in order to uh, to perform this, then we take um, uh, we average overlapping regions 
okay? Because if we have um, the same weight for different constraints, okay, let's say that we have, uh, all, for simplicity, we, we only have uh, two overlaps, two overlapping crops, then in order to find the solution that best, uh, best matches um, the least square distances, then it will just be taking the average of our overlapping regions, right? And uh, as noted by, by design, it means that at each denoising step, the result of it, JP minus one, is going to be consistent because of uh, the, the average is a symmetric operation. Um, and indeed, uh, we are going to keep applying this at, at, at the different denoising steps. And uh, eventually, um, yeah, at each time, we uh, make sure that the result is consistent. Yeah. Um, but you also have to solve for um, the for the the non-overlapping region that minimizes the distance to your prime. Right, but no, uh, note that uh, for in in case that we don't have uh, an overlap uh, an overlap, then the solution to this um, would just be um, to take uh, the original prediction. Right, so let, let's say in the in the very uh, in the in the most uh, uh, toy example where uh, we only have uh, one crop. Okay, so uh, I uh, goes from uh, one to one. And there is only a single uh, uh, view. Then the solution of, of finding uh, J such that it is the, as close as possible to the original prediction without any other constraint to just be to take this uh, um, prediction, right? Um, so similarly in uh, pixels where there are no other constraints, then we will just take their values. And this actually is quite an important um, uh, property. It might, because it means that uh, the way we formulate this problem allows for the simple case of no constraints to actually be perfectly equivalent to just sampling from the model. Um, which, which might seem, uh, yeah. Uh, so then this image that we have, or this slide here, isn't really what's happening, right? Uh, there, and there is, um, if you look at these images, the, the two images in the middle of between which you're taking the difference, the non-overlapping region between them should be the same. Uh, do you mean um, the, the in the left-hand side? Um, in in the right hand side, they, they are the same. Uh, maybe it's a slightly difficult to, uh, uh, because of the visualization to to observe. But uh, for example, uh, notice the tree um, in the uh, left region uh, of the right hand side. So it is. It also appears in the bottom uh, row. Sure, sure, but I mean this. And this should be the same. Which is oh, um, so there are uh, many other uh, um, um, uh, constraints, right? So we don't only have these crops. This was uh, for illustration. In practice, the number of uh, we have uh, overlaps all over the panorama. So um, the the we don't take average only over two uh, uh, views, but we take uh, average over. Uh, multiple views uh, in each pixel is being affected actually by by different uh, views. Okay, yeah. so it's actually more complicated than this, but this is just uh, to illustrate the high level uh, motivation. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, so now a, a question um, that um, uh, pro probably uh, many of you ask yourselves is how does it work? I mean, if uh, intuitively, how can it make sense? Because I mean, one can uh, think that if we perform this averaging over inconsistent predictions, we will just get blurry result, right? I mean, if we think about it in terms of uh, RGB space, if we take two images that are unaligned and we average them, we just get something blurry. But the important, the very important uh, thing is that this um, operation is being uh, performed during the generation process. So we steer the generation from an inconsistent, um, uh, from inconsistent predictions, uh, we gradually steer it into consistent predictions. And an important uh, uh, property of 
diffusion uh, processes that allows us to uh, make this is that the generation is close to fine. Okay, so first, um, in terms of the signal that the model uh, generates, uh, it starts with generating a very coarse uh, low frequency signal, and then gradually adds more and more details. Now, when we start from a very uh, coarse signal, then even uh, if we perform uh, this um, uh, um, uh, uh, averaging, for example, then we essentially, uh, uh, we, we can think about it as doing it in a, a coarse uh, scale. And so we don't uh, average, uh, so we average like very low uh, frequency signal. And in a sense, it's, it's similar to building an image in an image pyramid and operating first on a very coarse scale and then refining and refining it. And that's where um, high frequency details are being added uh, throughout the generation, and we can indeed uh, achieve high quality results. Okay, so now let's see uh, some uh, results first. So first, uh, about I uh, close the loop about the panorama. So given different text prompts, we can generate uh, very wide panoramas. Uh, and as you can see, uh, indeed, if if we look at different overlaps, each one of them looks like a valid sample from the model. Yeah. Um, what are the, uh, how big are the overlaps in this? Is it always half of the image? Yeah, so um, uh, the overlap side is um, usually uh, at least a quarter or one over eight uh, of the image will work well. Uh, more than this, I mean, more overlap at some point just becomes redundant. Um, and in, you can think about it that it becomes redundant because our motivation is to find a generation path, which is consistent. And once it's consistent, uh, it's already consistent, right? So if it is consistent uh, for a given uh, uh, overlap, then increasing the overlap will not uh, uh, have uh, any additional impact at some point. And the width of these panoramas is uh, 11 times more than the uh, height to to, keep that, to to the very extreme. Mm -hmm. um, and just in terms of uh, comparison, so th there was no direct uh, method to generate uh, panoramic images, but we wanted to kind of do our best uh, to, to compare to uh, different approaches. So what we considered are uh, uh, autoregressive approaches. So you can think about um, uh, given access to outpainting uh, model or inpainting model, then you could start from uh, the center uh, image and then gradually uh, add more and more details to the right and to the left, uh, essentially expand the panorama width until reaching uh, the final result. And the, the main difference between these approaches and our approach in the technical side is that our, like, our approach is uh, not autoregressive in the sense that each denoising step takes into consideration the entire uh, denoising uh, predictions. And we, see, we saw a very uh, clear uh, uh, failure case uh, in the autoregressive approaches where they start with a high quality image because uh, we just start with a provided image. But once um, the, the, the autoregressive process continues, there is a very clear degradation in quality. As you can see, for example, uh, when we use uh, stable diffusion in painting model. So the left uh, side and the right side only become more degraded. Also, there are uh, many times noticeable seams artifact just because the in-painting model uh, are taking an in-painting model like blended diffusion and uh, make it an out-painting model doesn't necessarily uh, work uh, very well uh, in practice. Um, and our uh, uh, sim artifacts uh, and duplications. But most of the problem is uh, error accumulation that uh, occurs uh, when performing the, the generation in an autoregressive manner. Okay, now let's uh, move uh, on to the second application, which is the region based control. So the in. Yeah. Will you get to run times uh, at some later point? Um, I, I, not, not in terms of a, a, a table, but I can discuss sometimes now. So, so uh, actually, a uh, nice uh, property about uh, multi-diffusion is that 
Um, we apply the denoising predictions for the different uh, crops in the panorama case in parallel, right? And then we consolidate them uh, into one uh, coherent prediction. So it means that we can uh, stack the different uh, views just as a batch. And so there is a trade off, uh, of course, of uh, memory and runtime. But if we have enough uh, memory, then this can be equivalent to just sampling a single view up to uh, you know the batch uh, over. So you just need, um, I don't know, 12 times more memory compared to a single model for a panorama like this. Right. Um, so, uh, and this goes uh, to, you know, the exact implementation. So, I mean, uh, of course we, we can combine this. I mean, uh, let's say that we have a, a cap of uh, maximum uh, batch size of four, uh, and, but we have uh, more crops than we can have uh, batches and the size uh, we can work with. Um, yeah, so, um, question I have like uh, in the figure below, like I mean, it's clearly better than the figures above. Uh, but one thing that uh, we notice, um, did you hear me by the way? Or, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. So, one thing uh, that, that we notice, and especially on the mountain one, is um. Like one of the things with diffusion models is that it's, it's trained on photography images and on photography images like you often have like the central element um, uh, that, that is like uh, something that is um, uh, more important, more appealing. And like one, one thing that we can notice, for example, is like if you look at the peak of the mountain, like there's a peak repeating in uh, like a very like regular interval. And I suppose like if we look at these things, like also in the, all the, the other images, like we can see skyscrapers like repeating also um, not all the time, but at, at regular intervals. Um, and it might like, so the, the way that you do is like you separate the panorama into like a fixed set of diffusion uh, of like uh, of overlapping windows, right? So maybe like let's say 10, 10 windows here. And, and one thing I'm wondering is like um, right now, because all the diffusion model kind of think that they are like the center, like the center of focus of the image, they all generate these mountain peaks. Um, but what if like you were to fix only the two um, the two boxes at the extremities and all the other boxes would move randomly like so that they don't stay fixed but instead like you you would have these bounding boxes change place such that there's always an overlap but uh, there's no more notion of like what's a uh, what's the center of the image and what's not like I'm, I'm wondering if that's like uh so, something that would be possible with your method trend yeah it's it, it's very interesting uh we actually thought about uh, trying uh what you mentioned uh it, it wasn't uh I, I mean as a uh we didn't feel it was as important for uh showcasing the the method but definitely uh, th there is a, a clear bias in most extreme image models uh, to be uh, very, to have a bias uh, towards the center of the image and uh, to, I mean, to generate like one object, uh, centered object. Um, so um, yeah, this is certainly a bias. Also, uh, of the model, remember also that in terms of the, uh, the task definition in the panorama case, we want that each uh, uh, overlapping region will uh, adhere to the same text form, right? So indeed, if, if we want that each uh, overlap will have, will look like snowy mountain, then we'll have uh, many uh, mountain peaks, right? Because this is uh, like uh, our best, uh, at best we have, um, we, we have this uh, happening. But if we want to avoid this, then one option could be um, what you suggested. I think it's an interesting approach. Um, to uh to randomize a bit the exact uh location of the overlap so not not working with uh um uniform uh, uh distances 
but with uh, slight variations. So I think this um, this can uh, has a lot of uh, like it can probably uh, help in this sense. And a, a different approach uh, for tackling uh, slightly different problems could be to to define the matter diffusion generation in a course to find manner across different uh, scales of the panorama. So for example, um, if we want to generate one coherent object and not uh, just that to, to uh, fulfill the requirement that each view satisfy the prompt, then we could define that the the diffusion uh, the mass diffusion process such that uh, it could it will consolidate um, uh, uh, low uh, resolution version of the panorama and the high resolution version of the panorama such that uh, across scales, it will uh, look like the uh, prompt that we want to generate. For example, if you want to generate a single object, okay, if the prompt would be, uh, let's say, uh, a, a dog, then we will just generate uh, many dogs, right? Because each view will contain a dog. And if you want to generate a single dog, then we also need to define the constraints in a uh, probably in a multi-scale uh, manner. Does this answer your question? Yeah, it does. Uh, thanks a lot. Okay, so now let's uh, continue to the second application. So the region-based control. So the inputs to uh, the input in this case is a set of masks and corresponding text points. For example, moon, uh, aurora lights, and dinosaur. Um, and again, uh, uh, of course, if we, we would just apply the diffusion process uh, with the different prompts, uh, clearly there is no relation between them. Just get uh, different images. Right? And what we would like to achieve achieve is to find uh, the multi-diffusion denoising uh, uh, result in order to uh, consolidate these different uh, predictions, but also while satisfying the set of uh, mask constraints. And, and as we can see, so again, uh, it, the high level uh, motivation is again to define the multi-diffusion to be as close as possible to diffusion, but now in each region. And the way we formulate it is in identical manner to the uh, panorama case. The only difference is that now we also mask the constraints by MI, where MI are different masks. Okay, so again, the the, uh, the solution uh, to this uh, set of constraints is just going to be to take weighted average, but also mask by the given masks. Um, here, uh, uh, the, it was illustrated uh, for a square image, but we can combine the, the different constraints. We can combine the constraints uh, uh, coming from uh, the panorama case with constraints from region uh, control-based and generate images that are both at varying aspect ratio and with different kind of uh, region uh, constraints. Yeah, so for example, this one, and know that we can have different level of accuracy in terms of uh, the masks. So they can be bounding box and they can be more tight masks. And we can see some more examples uh, of uh, combining different constraints. You can see like both very uh, uh, different uh, various aspect ratios and various uh, uh, region constraints. Uh, some can be more accurate than others. Uh, so it's also a very intuitive interface uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, user generating uh, samples. So, uh, any questions so far? Okay, and I think the, the nice thing about uh, multi diffusion is that it's pretty general. The only thing that we assume is uh, that we have access to the diffusion model, the diffusion process. Uh, is gradual, so we can uh, steer the generation uh, during the, the different denoising steps. And th these ideas can be adapted to different domains. And also, it's uh, there is a quite popular uh, 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 way of uh, utilizing gamma diffusion for upscaling images uh, similar to super resolution, just by uh, defining uh, the multi diffusion uh, panorama case and on a, naive, on a naively sub, uh, upsampled uh, image and adding high frequencies uh, using uh, multi-diffusion. I well, won't we'll get into all these details, but just uh, yeah. Actually, give a, a, a show how we used uh, 
ideas for massive diffusion in uh, my recent uh, project of uh, Lumiere, where we uh, uh, built a, a text to video model for uh, generation and editing. And just to give it the, the setting for how uh, we use Lumiere, so he, for generating high resolution, uh, both images and videos, then typically uh, uh, we start with generating a low resolution, uh, for example, at 128, and then having a super resolution model. So this is was the um, uh, scheme in, uh, in Imagine, for example, in pixel space models. Similarly, uh, in latent diffusion models, uh, many times there is also a super resolution that works a model that operates on the lat uh, latent space. And the issue here is that uh, the super resolution models, uh, of course, they operate on a high resolution space. So they are very memory, uh, their memory requirements are very, very high. Um, and to this end, it's uh, practically impossible uh, to have a super resolution model that takes into account all frames at once. Okay, so the super resolution model, even though it, the, the, uh, it super resolves in the spatial dimension, uh, when working with videos, it still needs to be temporally consistent in order for each uh, super resolution prediction will, uh, you know, be, will be consistent across frames. So uh, the common approach uh, was uh, due to the, again, to the memory requirements that uh, do not enable to have the super resolution working on entire video is to work on uh, different chunks or different segments of the video. So for example, we first apply the super resolution model on the first 10 frames and then on the second uh, uh, chunk of 10 frames and so on. And the problem uh, here uh, might be quite obvious is that uh, this approach creates a noticeable boundary artifacts between segments. And this is something that actually can be observed in uh, the results of uh, most uh, existing methods uh, just uh, because of this uh, uh, limitation, memory limitation. So uh, we can visualize it uh, uh, in a different manner, the, like the problem. So let's look at uh, some generated result and add some uh, slice of it. Now visualize uh, how it uh, uh, changes uh, over time. So you can see that, uh, I, I hope you can see uh, through uh, the screen sharing uh, that at each um, uh, segment, uh, after a few, uh, um, uh, rows in this uh, uh, XT slice of visualization, there is just a boundary artifact because uh, it means that we started uh, with a new uh, uh, window uh, for the resolution model. And we can also vi uh, visualize it just by looking at distances uh, between uh, adjacent frames. As you can see, there is a, a clear uh, uh, jump, a clear peak whenever uh, the, the window uh, just like uh, whenever a new window starts. Yeah, so probably now uh, the, it may, makes a lot of sense that we can just use multi-diffusion uh, in a similar manner uh, to the panorama case uh, in order to fix this problem. Okay, so uh, instead of just feeding the first 10 frames, and then the 10, uh, frame 10 and frame 20, then we also consider overlaps and apply multi-diffusion in order to uh, consolidate them into a coherent uh, prediction. So note that, uh, that the multi-diffusion here is basically the same as the panorama case. However, it works on the temporal dimension instead of the width dimension uh, as in the image uh, case panorama. Okay, and any questions about this in terms of the technical uh, aspect? Okay. Um, so actually, extremely simple approach, but just allows to uh, uh, resolve this issue. Um, so again, this uh, XT visualization of how a single slice uh, uh, evolves over time. And you can see that uh, when we apply multi-diffusion, then since we also consider overlapping uh, time segments, then we don't have these uh, peaks uh, at each, uh, after each uh, uh, fixed interval unlike the, without the multi-diffusion case. And I think it's actually quite uh, nice uh, to see that there is clearly uh, a lot of similarity between the uh, without multi-diffusion uh, prediction and the prediction with multi-diffusion up to the fact that the multi-diffusion uh, 
just makes it uh, coherent. So this is actually something as a property that we also observed in multi-diffusion in the image case, I mean, generating panoramas, that many times when we generate with, just to see what would happen, if we generate with a non-overlapping regions, then we get different images. But once we generate with multi-diffusion, then there, there is some uh, relation with the original generation, but the content still significantly changes in you know, order to be consistent, but it's somehow affected by the original uh, diffusion path, which is quite uh, interesting. Yeah. So this then means that the um, like the intermediates between the frames that you're in painting, right? You no, no, no. You're doing super resolution, not in. Um, I thought. Um, can we also use this to say we generate every tenth frame and we want to in paint the intermediate frames? Um, so in general, um, uh, if I uh, rephrase it a bit, then if I if the question could, I mean, I mean you could ask again uh, if we could uh, use multi diffusion for in painting in general, even in images, right? Um, and so it is possible actually. There are, um, as I mentioned, I think multi diffusion is uh, quite general. I mean, we uh, mostly showed it uh, for uh, the panorama case and the original control case. Because I think Panorama uh, illustrates the uh, basic idea uh, in a very intuitive manner. And the region uh, control was just an appealing application. But there are uh, various other applications that can be uh, formulated in a uh, similar manner. In painting is one of them. We actually, uh, it's definitely possible to uh, formulate uh, in, a, in a similar manner. Um, uh, so yeah. Uh, it, we just need to define the set of constraints. So the, a constraint could be a fixed content also. That if we know what is uh, supposed to be generating a certain uh, spatial location, so in certain frames. Yeah. Okay. Now your constraint would just be to um, at each. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's actually interesting. Mm -hmm. It's actually interesting. Uh, I mean. Uh, which in the case of in painting, which constraints to uh, consider? I mean, one, one option, you know, if we just treat it as a, you know, the way usually in painting is uh, works, is to use it as a hard uh, constraint that we know what content needs to be in in the known uh, content, and that will be the content. Um, but a different way could also be to uh, uh, formulate uh, the in painting constraints and soft constraints. And allow the, the content, the original content, actually, to, to also uh, change uh, slightly in order for the scene to be more plausible. Uh, uh, so this is something that actually uh, we tried. Um, uh, and actually, it, it's quite interesting. I mean, many times uh, we can start with a fixed content and, and then uh, apply mass diffusion and use the, the fixed content as, as a soft constraints and not a hard constraint. And then uh, it can change actually quite uh, nicely. Uh, for example, if you if you start with um, uh, two images that have uh, very different uh, content, so it's it's not very clear even how to perform in painting between them. Then you can see that once you apply the multi diffusion with this constraint, then the content will change. So it won't, it's it's not like uh, the classical in painting uh, formulation, but it will change only slightly. And just to to make it will adapt to the generated scene in a actually quite interesting manner. So what do these soft constraints look like, for example? So we can uh, apply just uh, have a MSC uh, uh, constraint between um, um, let's say that we have uh, two images. Okay? We can uh, uh, reverse the generation process. Uh, so uh, for DDIM inversion, for example, then. We have, a, we have a fixed uh, uh, generation process, right? That we know that will generate uh, the given content. Now we can use this reference path only as additional constraint to the set of least square constraints that we want to follow, right? So it doesn't mean that we, need, we will override to the original content, but we will just stay close to it. So this will uh, allow us to uh, you know, still have uh, some connection to the original content, but still also changes it in order to generate a scene which connects the different images in a plausible way. 
Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, to conclude, um, so in my diffusion, uh, the idea was to use the prior of diffusion model in a way uh, that, you know, in order to, to define a different generation process that is be, built upon a, a given a prior. And there is no training, you know, fine tuning. So this is a uh, very uh, easy uh, to work with in different domains. And as you saw, uh, it's quite a general approach. So we, we also applied it in the temporal dimension of a text to video model. Um, uh, however, uh, in terms of limitation, we uh, heavily rely on on the ability of the model, on the prior of the model, and the ability to converge to a good uh, solution, to a good path. And just to uh, show uh, what this limitation can look like in practice, so considering that we want to generate uh, a panorama uh, with uh, the text a waterfall. So first, as you can see, uh, if we apply the multi diffusion the way I described it, and with not with a, a cost to find or different uh, constraints, then as you see, each region uh, will have uh, a, a waterfall in, rather than having like one coherent waterfall. And we could try to uh, fix this by also adding uh, region-based constraints, like you uh, see, with, where we uh, uh, indicate where the waterfall uh, should, uh, should be generated. But in this case, uh, it probably was too difficult for in terms of the model prior because the, mo the model really wanted to generate a waterfall in different locations. And then we, uh, we got this result, which the visual quality was slightly degraded. So this is uh, what we mean by the ability of the model to, uh, to converge to a good path. Uh, the entire premise uh, here is that uh, the diffusion model has a strong enough prior that we can define our constraints and still uh, satisfy the, uh, the ability to sample from the data distribution. Is this a, an issue of the model not being translation invariant? Um... Yeah, so um, the the, uh, um, the model is indeed not uh, translation invariant, but I think that it's, it's, it's more, it's less about this and more, I think, about um, just general biases of the model. So it relates to the, uh, for example, um, uh, if uh, uh, the model, uh, the prior uh, of how to generate a waterfall uh, is to generate a waterfall that, you know, starts uh, like the, uh, that you, you see the entire uh, waterfall, not only like a segment from it, then it will be different, difficult to generate uh, crops uh, in which we only need to see uh, a part of the, uh, a small part of the waterfall, not the entire waterfall. Yeah. Um. I mean, it, it's actually similar to the fact that uh, the model, uh, when we want to generate a certain like uh, animal, uh, for example, it will uh, probably generate the, the entire animal, like the face and the body, or at least the face, and not only a small texture region. So if the constraints are, are going to be about, about uh, generating texture regions, and we either need to do some more, uh, you know, prompt engineering uh, work, or uh, it will just be a slightly more difficult. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, thank you. And uh, feel free to ask more questions. Yeah, I see that there is a question. Uh, Danny? Yes. Hello. Thank you very much for your book. I have uh, two short questions just to uh update my understanding so in the lumiere paper uh <laughs> like a very maybe naive question but the actual optimization process that you, you are doing is simply a mean <laughs> isn't it you just take uh, adjacent frames several frames and you just take a mean of them right because i mean so the optimal solution for this squared right yes Yes. Yes. Okay. That, it just was a bit confusing to me <laughs> because then, uh, yeah. Okay. I, I guess it's more interesting when you have some um, non-linear relationships. Then I'm not sure. Uh, okay. So this is I mean, and the second is uh, just a time question. In the first paper, 
you're also using this FTD loss. And yeah. uh, I just wanted to understand what is like, why this weight matrix update uh, that is applied with a Hadamard product is helping. So what is like, is there some strong uh, bias for the necessity for it, or can we just use something else? Again, did, uh, um, do you, did you ask why do we need a Hadamard product for the M? Yeah, basically, ba basically. Yeah, so th this is just the, the, um, the task definition. I mean, if the, uh, we want to generate uh, it, the M uh, mask was uh, relevant for uh, the region-based uh, application, where we want to define our constraints only in a masked region. Okay, so um, that's why we have this uh, instantiation. Ah, I, I see, yeah. I see. And so in general, this is a mask. This is a, uh, I see. Okay, then, sorry, I misunderstood. Can you maybe yeah, go and back? the last question? Uh, Can you maybe go back to the slide? So yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, just uh, just now, there's my question. That this cascade models in the Lumiere paper. Uh, so can they also be used with? Uh, I, I guess uh, Hannes asked something similar. Can they also be used with this uh, mean? Uh, like interpolation between ad adjacent frames. Because they also, yeah, like Hannah, so yeah. I guess. Yeah, I see. It's a good similar good question. question. Yeah. So um, it's, uh, it's actually it's, uh, the temporal dimension, the spatial dimension, when it comes to super resolution, are very, behave very differently, actually. And in general, uh, I, I, it's actually. Uh, goes to a different discussion about mostly about Lumiere, so I'll answer it about it uh, quite briefly. But in the case of the temporal uh, frame interpolation, then the problems are not only local, so are not only between, uh, 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 you know, but like but the boundary artifacts that we saw in the super resolution case, in the spatial super resolution case. The main issues with the uh, frame interpolation are actually more in terms of the global coherency. So I won't go, go into this details because it's mostly about the Lumiere paper, but uh, I hope it uh, maybe answered uh, to some extent the, mm -hmm. the question. Okay, I see. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, uh, hello. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Hi. Um, I, I could barely hear you. Can you please? Uh, yeah. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah uh, thank you for the amazing talk. Uh, I had one question regarding the training part. Um, I think I could not really get it how uh, this whole like process is achieved uh, without training really. I, I thought this uh, like when you are taking the mean and everything, uh, we are sort of updating the uh, psi and phi's is that what we are doing? Can you please elaborate a bit on that? Oh, I could wait. Not... Saomia, are you? Uh, do you think the phi and psi correspond to model parameters? Uh yeah, I, I feel a bit confused here. So if you can clarify a bit. Yeah, so I uh, okay. So um, uh, in this equation, so um. Psi, which is the multi diffusion uh, process, is what we want to define, and we define this. Uh, this is the the, the generation predi the denoising prediction, and we define this as the solution to this minimization problem. Okay, so psi by itself is no parameters that are different from the model. It's just the way we define like the function of denoising. Now, in terms of the actual optimization problem, then we we define the optimization problem. In the, the variable of optimization is J. Okay, so we don't optimize for the weights of the model. I mean, it could be possible also to define uh, it in different ways, but here we define the optimization over J. Now, J in the case of panorama is simply uh, the tensor holding the pixels. Um, so in order to optimize uh, for this tensor, 
we can just perform it in a closed uh, form uh, manner because there are no uh, parameters of a, of a network, for example. Okay, so we use uh, the reference model, a phi of JT, which is the predictions of the given diffusion model, as the ground truth signal. Okay, and notice what we want, the parameters that we want to optimize for. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, I get it now. Thank you. Okay, then if we have no more questions, I would appreciate it if we maybe finish up by um, summarizing, let's say the different, right? I see this as you have this underlying principle or this underlying idea of you can define your constraints and this underlying idea maybe, um, or it is quite valuable because we now have so many other ideas of or so many ideas of how to apply it and use it and yeah if we maybe do uh, right here our application is we want to generate a panorama so the way that we use multi-diffusion is or the, the way that we uh, um, formulate our constraints is overlapping regions should be uh, should overlapping reasons should be the same um, no um, wait the the constraints are that the uh, what we generate should be as similar as possible to the uh, no the constraint is overlapping regions are the same and our uh, op optimization objective is uh, it should be as similar as possible to what our model generated if we do not make the same. What it boils down to in practice, as Denise says, is average uh, or keep your frames uh, completely the same, except for the part that overlaps, there you take the average of what you produced. And now let's maybe have this summary again for your next application idea. And I think the next one was, um, Impact? No, no. The next one was the way you draw. Yeah. 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 And so here your uh, constraint is um, the, the the constraint is you generate something from um, um, condition model, like let's say the dinosaur mo dinosaur model, and then the constraint is in the image that we feed in as input again for the next time. Uh, we now just take the um, we now just take the output of our uh, not um, we uh, the dinosaur. Yeah, we take the dinosaur output and put it at the dinosaur shape. Right. And for the rest of the stuff. We take the unconditional output, and well, for the aurora part, we take the um, the aurora output, and for the moon plus aurora part, we take the average of the two. Exactly. Okay, and then next one, please. <laughs> yeah, and then we have the uh... super resolution. Yeah, that yeah, that is is, is sparse super resolution that is temporally aware. That's... Um, okay, but if we do a super resolution, oh, right, right. Um, so the super resolution, right, is you don't really do a super resolution with multi diffusion, you do temporally aware super resolution with multi diffusion, right? Um, uh -huh. so the, the making it temporally aware, a uh, temporarily consistent, that is the part that's done with multi diffusion. Exactly. And th there is actually um, um, various uh, 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 implementations of multi-diffusion uh, for actually for super resolution um, that are not part of the paper, but just uh, extensions that uh, uh, other people are used for sub super resolution in the spatial dimensions, not in a video model. And the way they did it is by as follows. So we first generate an image at the certain resolution. We can then uh, uh, navy up sample it. And then uh, if one option is to apply super resolution model on crops and just uh, and then uh, consolidate the different crops 
as in using multi-diffusion. Um, yeah, there, there are actually various ways uh, to do it, uh, also without a super resolution model, but just even by performing uh, SD edit. So for example, you could do uh, a naive super resolution and then use SD edit to generate high frequency detail in different crops and consolidate the different uh, predictions using multi-diffusion. And actually in the paper, um, the way we formulate it is, is more general than these applications. And I think that it, it, uh, you're welcome to, uh, to take a look at the paper and also uh, see the formulation there, which is very general. And uh, right, in some cases, it just um, can be reduced to a simple uh, average over frames. But in other cases, it can be uh, some, some other operation. And it really just depends on the, on the application in which we instantiate it. On. Uh, but it all is the exact same formulation. So I think it's very interesting to see how uh, it can be applied uh, for various uh, domains. And uh, in the paper, we mostly focus on text to image uh, models just because you know text to image uh, is a very uh, exciting uh, you know uh, type of diffusion models and uh, results with very uh, cool outputs. Um, but there is no uh, need for it to be on text to image model. It, the general diffusion model uh, idea and uh, we apply it here on a text to video model it can also be applied on different types of diffusion model that are, for example, a human diffusion models or various kinds of diffusion, other diffusion models. Uh, so the, these ideas uh, don't assume anything about the, the, the content itself. So then it can be transferable. So that's why the formulation is, is quite general and uh, each instantiation can boil down to a simple operation. Yeah. I believe it. I believe it. Uh, so, how did people do the super resolution uh, in your in their video before? Because um, right, we saw these artifacts, and but did they literally just take the first um, ten frames and then? Oh no, no, you take the first frame and then you take the first uh, and then you generate the. I don't know, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly, I mean, you could maybe think about some autoregressive manner and condition the model both on a frame and on a super low resolution. Like, uh, um, it's very complicated actually in practice to do all these uh, things. Um, in general, super resolution is uh, quite a, a challenging task actually, um, especially when it comes to be, uh, when it needs to be temporally aware. Um, and in, in, that's why uh, mostly um, uh, just uh, people, uh, uh, use uh, like uh, have these uh, artifacts because that's like the simpler uh, way. But uh, with multi diffusion, it was uh, pretty uh, out of the box uh, for uh, uh, just facing it uh, in a very simple manner. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, I'm I'm satisfied. I, if there are any other questions, I would say let's maybe uh, have them some other time or via email or something like that. And Omia, any last words that you want to say or any, um, yeah, finishing? Yeah, I, think, I think a key takeaway uh, in this work um, was uh, that using a, a diffusion model, um, a pre-trained diffusion model, there, there, there is so much uh, that we can do with it. Uh, and, you know, sometimes it's interesting to think about applications which um, might not seem... Um, a straightforward uh, with a pre-trained diffusion model without training. So for example, you know, generating uh, very uh, panoramas of different uh, aspect ratios, it was mostly interesting for us just because it seems like a very challenging, like out of domain uh, kind of problem. Um, the region-based control, while after multi-diffusion, there were a bunch of other works that uh, trained the diffusion model specifically for these tasks, um, then still, uh, you know, Training a model, I mean, uh, is uh, can can uh, be good, you know, for various applications, but also uh, it requires data sets and, and curation and has limitations, uh, like various kinds of limitations. And using a pre-trained uh, model prior is actually can be actually very powerful. Uh,